This is the second tutorial on programming using the blend for web API library. This tutorial explains the example code from the blend for web user manual that loads a 3D scene into a web page and it shows how to make the scene interactive. The first thing that needs to be done is to export a 3D scene from Blender. Click the material button, click the diffuse color and set the green and blue values to zero. Click the world button, change Blender render to Blend for Web. A render sky checkbox appears. If you don't tick it, only the foreground objects are rendered. To make the sky more interesting, I'm going to set the horizon color red to 0.2, the green to 0.3, and the blue to 0.4, the zenith color, the red, green, and blue to 0.8, and I'm going to tick blend sky and real sky. I've made the 3D scene in Blender. Next, I'm going to export it using Blend for Web. First, I'm going to save the Blender file. I'm going to call it Red Cube and save. Next, I'm going to export the scene, File, Export, and select the Blend for Web JSON option. I'm going to export to the my temp folder which I used in the previous tutorial it already contains the hello world app and the blend for web JavaScript library click export if we look inside the my temp folder we see the JSON file and there is also a bin file both files are needed to load the scene to load the Blend for Web user manual, I'm going to go into the SDK folder and double click the main index file and click the user manual link. Scroll down and click for application developers. Scroll down and open up application programming and click loading scenes in apps. Highlight the listing right click and copy open a text editor i'm using windows notepad right click and paste file save i'm going to save in the my temp folder change the save type to all files and i'm going to call the file hello2.html and save so what does the web page listing do? Well, the first script tag links to an external JavaScript file that contains the Blend for Web modules. In between the next opening and closing script tags is the definition of a function hello. It has the same name, but it is not the same function that was described in the previous tutorial. This function sets up links to two Blend for Web modules, the main module and the data module. The next line is pure JavaScript. There is a canvas tag in the body of the web page that creates a canvas element, which is a drawable region for graphics. The tag gives the canvas the name canvas ID and the get element by ID function returns a link to the canvas element. Next we run two blend for web functions, function init which is from the main module and function load which is from the data module. To see what the API reference says about the functions go back to the SDK index and click the link Click the link for the main module. Click the link for the init function. The function creates the WebGL context and initializes the engine. Modern browsers support WebGL and WebGL can render 3D content onto a canvas. Going back to look at the data module and the load function, 
it loads the 3D data from the JSON file exported from Blender. The name of the JSON file in the example is sumscene.json and we need to change that to match our file. Finally, the onload event attribute will run the hello function once the page has loaded. I need to change the name of the JSON file to red cube and save. Now I'm going to go into the my temp folder and I'm going to double click the hello2.html file to see what happens and we get nothing. To get the scene to load we need to put more common library files into the my temp folder, go into the SDK folder, the deploy folder, apps, common and the files we need are the uranium files. Select, right click, copy, go back to the my temp folder and paste. Now when we double click the hello2.html file, the scene loads but there are no camera controls and no other code that changes the scene so it is completely static. Going back to the user manual, this note basically says this simple script will load a 3D scene but to make a useful app you need to do more. Scrolling down, the next topic is the module system. I'm going to skip this now and come back to it when we look at the code snippets. I'm going to click on the next topic which is creating apps quickly. I have jumped ahead and copied the listing and pasted it into Notepad and changed the name of the scene to be loaded to Red Cube. File, save, change the save type to all files and I'm going to call the file hello3.html and save. So how is the listing different to the previous example? Well module main has been replaced by module app and the first function we meet is module apps init function rather than module mains init function. With the main init function the parameter passed to the function was the canvas ID. With the app init function the parameter is a JSON list of property names and property values. The app init function uses the list of properties to configure the app. The canvas container ID property initializes a canvas in the specified container and the callback property sets the name of a function that is called when the initialization is complete. We then have a chain of two callback functions. The load CB function as we have just said is called when the canvas has been initialized and it uses the data modules load function to load the 3D scene. It also has a parameter which is the name of a function which is called when the scene has been loaded. My scene is called Red Cube, so some scene has to be edited to Red Cube. Once the scene has loaded, the loaded CB function is called and it uses a function from the app module to enable the camera controls. Notice that in the body of the web page, the div tag is used rather than the canvas tag. Those familiar with the CSS box model will know that the div tag is used for container boxes. Now double clicking the hello3.html file, the scene loads and I can use the mouse to move the camera. That's the end of the tutorial. In the next tutorial I'll show you how to use one of the code snippets. I'll put all the finished files for you to download at my website. Click the link or the eye icon. 
If you'd like to subscribe, click the link or the stick man. Thanks for watching and goodbye.